morning. Today we are in our be interviewing Mr. Greg King, one of the, uh, Sacramento's most community active young men that I know. Um, does so many positive things around the community that we want to make sure we expose him uh, or expose you to him so you'll know some of the things he's doing and some of the things that are going on in the community. You may want to get your kids involved and uh, you may want to make sure that you know who Mr. King is so when you see him, you can give him the respect he deserves. Mr. King, how are you doing today? Man, I'm doing great, man. I'm full of blessings, man. I already had my oatmeal this morning and and went out and put in some more work, and I got to put in some more work. <laughs> you know, so, <laughs> so I'm doing great. You know, my grandmother always told me growing up, you know, make sure that once your feet hit the ground, before you take them off the ground, you make sure you help somebody every single day. All right. That's a blessing right there. Yes, bless sir. Yes, sir. Uh, last year, Miss King, we uh, worked together with a program at Phoenix Park, a mentoring program for young men. Yes, sir. And uh, elementary school kids, I think they were from 7 to 12? Yes, and we had a couple of six-year-olds also. Okay, okay. And, you know, two little six-year-olds that was eager to start learning quick, you know, as opposed to us not letting them come in. We let them come in, and those two young men now are doing real good in school. So I'm glad that we let them come in in spite okay. of the age that we required for them. So it, it, it worked out real good. Well, some of the things I remember last year, one of the big issues we were having was bullying. And we found out that a lot of these young men were getting bullied at home by their older brothers and sisters. Yeah, you know, bullying, bullying been around a long, long, <laughs> long time. And so so it's just a new word now, bullying. Yes. You know, but, but the, the bullying that's taking place now is a form of uh, uh, combat. You know, okay. and a lot of our young brothers and sisters are introduced to this bullying at home when, when, when you do what big brother say or big sister say and then if you don't then you suffer the consequences but, but at the same time you know um, this, this form of bullying at home is just like I don't know the right, the right word for it but it's, it's so many of our young brothers that learn how to ball up their fists uh, through, through the industry when I say the industry that, that, that TV is a babysitter, that VCR is a babysitter, that, that video game is a babysitter. Yes. Yes. And, and our young people find themselves acting that out amongst each other sometimes. So so this bullying thing, man, is, is bigger than us, but we can't come back. We just have to work at it more in depth. We can't go back in the time, but we can use some of the, the skills that our grandparents gave us in time and discipline our kids, like sitting them down and explaining to them why it's not the right thing to do. And, you know, and the law has, has taken up the belt out of some of us, like our hands, you know, you can discipline your child without killing them. Yes, that's true. And you can discipline <laughs> your child without abusing them. You know, so so because of that, a lot of our parents, they're starting to be younger and younger parents, and they themselves still need to be taught and brought up. Parenting skills. You know, parenting skills. So, but in Phoenix Park, we, we was, um, I think it was blessed to have your, yourself and, and Miss Jackie Rose, I want to uh, give a shout out to her for the wonderful work that she does, and, and what she did was she allowed us, with the permission of the parents, to really work with the young men at, at a deeper level as if they were our sons. Yes, she did. Yeah. Certainly did. Well, I know we were successful in that program because the young men told us we were successful. Most definitely. But you do a lot more than just one program. You're one of the, the young men that I know that anytime I say something about community service, somebody in the community says, have you talked to Greg King? So I always feel blessed to know that I'm working with somebody that's, that's a community activist, not just words, but you're out involved in the community. Now, this year you had an outstanding basketball program for young men. Man. Tell us a little about that one. Well, our program is, is, is called Honor Our Gifts. This is what my son told me that runs the basketball program. He says it's called Honor Our Gifts Youth Developmental basketball program okay you may have the greatest jump shot in the world but are you coachable do you know what you can do from a triple threat there's three moves that you can do from a triple threat uh, are you going to stop talking long enough for me to tell you the right move so our program is, is more about the developing the young men and giving them the necessary skills so that when they do get into organized basketball they'll be coachable and they'll know more about it when the coach said give me a triple threat and get on the baseline of the proper way to shoot a free throw but also this program developmental part 
It's about life skills. You know, we're just not going to roll you to basketball and say, hey, go shoot free throws. But every time they come to the program, we give them a word. And, and one of the main words that my son gives them is work at it. And then he tells them the definitions and they have to recite it. So every Saturday they get a new word. So okay. right now they, some of the words is dedication, determination, and do. You know, you do as I say do. You don't do as I say what you do as I say do. And this is the right way to do it. And a lot of my young men are not being taught the right way how to do things. You know, I, I find young men say, yeah, yeah, I know, I, yeah, I know. But I'm 55 years old. I'm still learning. <laughs> <laughs> and, that, and I'm 68 and still learning. Yes. So I really understand exactly what you're saying. Well, for some reason, though, Mr. King, you're successful in the community um, at, with hands-on. And there are a lot of people that uh, attempt to do community work, but they're not successful hands-on. Why do you think that is? Well, number one is, I can never forget where I came from. I always remember how my, my Uncle Nancy, I'm from the South, I grew up in Georgia, how all my uncles and, and, and everybody did everything with their bare hands. You know, and, and, and when we would shoot marbles and, and jump a rope, and I didn't know then that it was teaching me hand and eye coordination. And, and in spite of all the things there was, it gave me the opportunity to use my brain. Not allow something else or somebody else to do it for me. And one of the reasons that I, um, I am successful in the community is because I still use those old school tactics. As, as much technology there is in my program, my students have to do everything there is when it comes to reading and writing by hand, by pencil, by paper. If, if there was a project on the table, and there's a group of kids that does it all with technology. And you take my kids, they have the pencil and the paper. If the power will go out, me and my kids are going to walk around the money. Because we're going to go get a candle or a kerosene lamp, and we're going to light it, and we're still going to do our work. And another reason I think I'm successful is because I still believe in not making a promise to a kid, but being a man of my work. Okay. I'm not just going to tell them to do something. I'm going to show them how to do it, I'm going to get right there and do it with them. And another thing too is, my grandmother told me, never burn a bridge because you may have to cross that bridge one day. So a person may treat me wrong or bad or whatever, I'll forgive them. But my life must go on and I may have to cross that bridge once again. And, and that's why I treat people with the utmost respect and that's very important. Okay, yeah. Now, uh, I know you're also working with a program with black and brown men. Could you tell us a little about that program? We have this... Um, well, the California Endowment is, is, um, have this program called the BMOC, the Boys and Men of Color. And, and, and what the Boys and Men of Color is about is bringing all our Boys and Men of Color on one agenda, on one page, for the same purpose of, of what affects you affect, affects me, what affects our Latino brothers affects me, what affects our Asian brothers affects me. That's why it's called Boys and Men of Color. And, and, and what, what that's about, man, more of our brothers are getting suspended at a higher rate, getting kicked out of school, getting less jobs. But also, um, a lot of our brothers are lazy. <laughs> okay, I can get with that. And, and through the boys and men of color, what we're doing is we're bringing older guys and younger guys together, and we're mentoring each other. Right now, we're doing what's called healing and talking circles throughout the Sacramento area. And every so often, we're bringing guys together, and we're talking and we let them talk about their issues so that they can start healing. Until you start healing yourself, there's nothing that I can do for you because I got to heal myself first. You got to heal. So let's help each other heal. So this is our third year of doing the Boys and Men of Color. We have a summit that we invite up to 100 young men to. But this year, we're going to take it a little farther. Uh, come Saturday, June 14th, we're going to have a day in the park where all these oh, men that God. we're bringing together right now, um, it's going to be a day of celebration. Everything is free. We're going to have 150 older guys and 150 younger guys. And then it's going to be called Saving Our Brothers and Sons. We're going to help each other save each other. So so that's that's huge and there's no cost to it. It's just a matter of coming. And um, no disrespect uh, to the church, but the church is outside of the walls of the church also. So we're having these meetings throughout the area. So that when you come, you won't have to say, well, man, I'm inside the church. I have to watch what I say. We want these young men and these older men to be able to get it off their chest. So we meet at community centers, we meet in parks, and eventually we're going to have some meetings at churches also. 
But I want these brothers to, to get all the trash off their chest before they okay. step inside of the church so that we can help them heal and move forward. Sounds like a great program. So you're doing a whole lot of things now. Is there anything uh, being done for women? Yes, yes there is. Uh, at my program, the name of my nonprofit is called Always Knocking Incorporation. And we have a, a parent program that's called Parents Advocating for Change. Uh, and, it's, and it's being facilitated by other parents. Also, we have a program for the little girls called the Building Blocks of a Leader. It's being facilitated by my daughter, Veronica Parker. Then also the, the Youth Development Program, which is the Young Men, which is my son. And then also we have the Junior General Program, which is for, for young boys of any color, any race. And, and the thing about our program is all the services are free. Okay, tell me a little about the Junior General. Oh, man, the Junior General is, is, is off. It's, it's, it's up there. The Junior General deal with life skills. It deal with anger management. It deal with attitudes and behavior. It deals with classroom performance. And we always, you know, a lot of programs wait to the end to have a graduation or ceremony. But we take advantage of every chance we get a chance to celebrate these young men. We celebrate it by having some type of small ceremony, giving them a certificate. And the thing about our program is, too, you don't graduate out of the program. There are different levels of graduation. First, you're a junior gentleman. Then you become a junior ambassador. Then you become an ambassador. And then you become a senior ambassador. So, say for example, today, this year, I'm in the program for the first time. This is your first time coming to the program. So, instead of an adult taking you and bringing you up to par, we let our young people do it. So, to be peer to peer mentors so that they can become responsible too and do the things that we're doing because I'm not going to be here forever. So, we have to pass the knowledge on. That's oh, wow. general. Now, Mr. King, tell me um, how you got so much wisdom with uh, you. Uh, were you uh, granted some of this wisdom by your dad, or like I heard you say, your uncles and your grandmother? So give me a little background on how you got so much wisdom at a young age to do some of these things. Well, well, number one is I'm, I'm um, at an early age, growing up in the South. I was taught to not to be in denial about who I am. My grandmother told me, if you don't know who you are. It's going to be hard for somebody else to know who you are. And and uh, accept the gifts that God has given you. So growing up in the South, I had the whole town. You know how they say it takes a village to raise one? Yes. Well, in the town, I got whooped by people I didn't even know. <laughs> okay. So, so my mom, Elizabeth King, may she rest in peace. My grandmother, Julia Birdsong, may she rest in peace and all the rest of them. My uncles and my cousins. And then when I came to California, you know, I, I got to meet this... this uh, Brother name is someone Frank Withrow. That, oh, that's you, <laughs> uh, Frank Withrow. So it's been so many people instrumental in my life and me developing all the wisdom that that I have. When I came to California, um, people used to tell me, "Man, you need to change your image. You need to change your image." I'm like, "What do you mean I need to change my image? I didn't change my image because they said I need to change my image. I changed my image because it was necessary for me to gain as much knowledge." People, I used to go into a room, dressed the way I used to be dressed, and they talk over me because they thought I was just somebody who didn't know anything. But I was that recorder. I was that intelligent person. To, instead of talking more, I listen more. And over the years, that's what I've done. I've, I've been blessed to graduate from high school. I went to the military. Uh, I came back home from the military. I had a mini scholarship to go to Stanford University. But man, um, in, in summer 1985, uh, I had my first experience with rock cocaine. I was a, a drug addict for two years straight. Two years straight. But because of my, my, my upgrowth and my etiquette, I didn't have to go to rehab. I rehab within myself. And to this day, I'm 27 years clean. So I feel inside of me that, that the higher power took me through all the things that, I, that I've gone through to be the person that I am today to give back to the community so I know when people trying to jive me, when people trying to tell me this and I know better. So I know that to be here today to talk about this, it is a blessing. So that's part of my wisdom. So it's, it wasn't just my mom and my grandmother, but it took a whole village, not just in drugs, but also in California and when I was in the military, even when I was in jail for being a drug addict. A lot of brothers uh, don't want to face that and 
want to be in denial about when they went through that obstacle. But but I know both sides of the tracks. If I need being on both sides of the tracks, I can help these young men better when they go in that juvenile hall or when they dropping out of school and stuff like that. So so they didn't lock me up and, and throw away the key. What they did, they just sent me up to another part of the educational institution. All right. So, well, it sounds like you have a lot of wisdom, a lot of experience. Could you give me um, some of the things that you're going to be doing in 2014 and maybe some dates? <laughs> or do you have a website or uh, they can go Yes, to we do have a website, uh, alwaysknocking.com. Uh, some of the things that we're doing right now, our Parents Advocating for Change programs is every other Saturday. And it is on our website. But the biggest thing that we have going right now is these talking and healing circles amongst these men. We, we get together and bring them brothers together and just let them talk. But on Saturday, June 14th, that's going to be the big day, a day of celebration in the park for all these men. We're going to come together, man. It's going to be awesome. You know, we ask them brothers to not wear a suit and tie. Just just be yourself. Wear you some tennis shoes, some jeans, some flip-flops, whatever it is that you want to wear. Because it's, it's so important that, that we allow these men to have the opportunity to open up so that they can heal, so that they can start to help their families a little stronger and a lot better. You know, and um, I'm here, man. This, this is what I do. I, I live this, I eat this, I sleep this. But the main thing is, is, is at first I had to be uh, in touch with Greg in order to help anybody that's in the community. Then also I had to, you know, people say, man, we set the good with the bad. But I flip it around. We have to accept the bad with the good, you know, so that we can help the bad become good. And my own saying is, we are on time today so that tomorrow we won't be late, Greg King. All right. I think we've heard it from Mr. Greg King, uh, Sacramento community-involved young man. So I want to say thank you for another great program. Make sure you go to Mr. King's website. Uh, and enjoy uh, the programs he has to bring for 2014. And we'll say we'll see you in our next session. Enjoy your week. Peace.